Hello YouTube, it's me again, Iron Bloke, and today I am playing Rising Storm 2, and I am super excited. Uh, with me in the background is my brother, and we're just going to watch, and he might talk. Maybe. No! So, uh, we're playing Hill 937, which uh, in was a real location, and... Was called we'll Hamburg Hill. Oh, I need to turn down my audios. We are taking Alpha. Let me uh quickly turn that one off. Where's that? Hopefully now you can hear me. Okay, so uh Hamburg Hill uh is starts off as a little jungle and then goes into an exposed hillside. It's one of my favourite maps. It's also quite hard, uh, especially as the Americans, which is why I chose to be American, because normally I go as a uh, DSHK gunner as a Viet Cong and, and shoot down helicopters, which is one of my favourite things to do in the world. So, um, yeah, this, this, this game's fucking awesome. Like, what I've played of it, so good. Um, it's like... Oh, shit, let me try that. It needs some polish because it's it's still in beta, but this is very late beta now. The third. What you got there? Yeah. We're taking B though. Oh, some dead people. Not good. Oh, and look, there's a uh, trip mine there. Don't know how. I don't know how we actually dig up trip mines. Uh, not trip mines, like booby traps. Let's try. One there, because he's probably going to die if I try. Uh, let's hold B. You can just step on it. I'm not going to step on it. I, so he can just step on it. Damn it. That's how you get rid of it, that. is to get your teammate, your gullible teammate, to step on it. Okay. So, uh, I should probably explain a little bit about some of the gameplay systems in this. So, it's very similar to Rise to Burp Storm 2, 1 even, which is a very asymmetrical gameplay. It's different in the sense of every team's basically got, everyone's got an automatic rifle. Um, oh, and if I don't die, I can show the bleeding system. If I hold F, I hear there's like a little timer now for... Oh, it's a grenade! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... The, the time that it takes to a bandage, uh, it depends on the severity of your wounds, so sometimes it can take a couple of seconds, sometimes it can take like 15. Yes. Um, going back to the asymmetrical gameplay, so everyone's got machine guns, that's... Or, yeah, assault rifles. But, uh, the su oh dear. The support that you get is different per side. So, um... The Americans obviously have helicopters, they've got napalm strikes, which is fucking amazing. Uh, you can call in a spooky, which is a C-47? Yeah, yeah Dakota. Gunship, which yeah. uh, basically bombards the uh, a pos a, uh, position yeah. mark on the map with uh, minigun fire. Which is fucking devastating. You, you don't really think about it being a devastating thing, but... No, it's... it's it does decimate the enemy, it's pretty decent. Um, one thing I'd say is much more realistic is uh, actually getting a kill and shooting a gun is quite difficult, quite difficult I think. The Vietnamese also get support as well, I mean both sides have recon aircraft. And artillery. Uh, yeah, uh, the Vietnamese only get sort of like sort of a rocket artillery and uh, they also get anti-air which is like a, a SAM I think. Something similar. Yeah, something, I'm not a modern warfare something guy. similar to a book rocket launcher. Yeah, but it just automatically fires yes. when a helicopter comes along. Well. But not only is there support differences, there's also differences in how the teams work. So, um, as an American, you have a squad leader. Oh, there's a gunship. And you can spawn on that. Squad there's a helicopter. Leader. Don't shoot the Americans, you wank. Yeah, oh. as an American, you. Uh, a squad leader, and like in Radicusha 2 and Rise of Storm, you can spawn in a squad leader. You can also spawn. Think I got him. Think I got him. Spawn at uh, normal spawn points, as you can expect. Oh, and also, if there's a Bell Huey, a transport a helicopter, you can spawn inside that on its way to be objective. And as a Vietnamese, um, 
uh, you can spawn in the uh, set spawns, or as a squad leader, you can't spawn in a squad leader, but a squad leader can, with a pickaxe, dig a support tunnel. tunnel. A tunnel, and from that tunnel is where you spawn. Each one digs into the tunnel, so it creates sort of a network of tunnels so people spawn across the map. It's quite fun and dynamic. And welcome to the Iron Blake's Brother show. <laughs> well, you weren't explaining it. I was about to, but then you jumped down my throat. But anyway, um, well, the way the squads are made up as well are different. So, um, as an American, there's uh, M79 Grenadiers. Uh, the, the Viet Cong and the MVA get the uh, RPG-7. And the squad roles aren't really set like uh, yeah. before. So if I was to press that button, you can see that uh, on the menus you, you have to join a squad. And it doesn't matter who's at the top of the list, that person, no matter if they're... I think Sniper's the only class that isn't. But um, if you're a machine gunner, a grenadier, a grunt... The, the, the top player on that list is the squad leader. Yeah, so there's no set squad leader roles. It makes it a bit more dyna dynamic. So as a squad leader, you don't have to... You know, in Rising Storm yes. as American, you could only use uh, M1 Carbine, um, Tommy Gun and Trench Gun. You can use, you know, a machine gun. Now you can. I don't know why I took my bayonet off. I love my bayonet. Yeah, yeah. that's another thing, is it's not... Fix bayonets. Fixed bayonets or not, you can take it off and it makes it more... There's, they've made a lot of in improvements to the game. Things that weren't necessarily, you know, made the Red Akesh and Rising Storm horrible to play, but little things, little tweaks that just made it, it feels like it a, up a bit. Yeah, it feels like a much more polished experience than the previous games we've had. Oh. I mean, Tripwire are a company uh, who uh, always do good off uh, consume feedback. I mean, I think uh, Killing Floor 2's early access is a good evidence of that. Did I get him? Who's artillery is that? Oh, the Kong artillery somewhere. This map is very to and fro, especially the early objectives. You tend to gain one and lose one. Also, I mean, the Viet Cong is balanced while being asymmetrical. I mean, the Viet Cong get an RPG-7, for example, for the anti-air, and DSKMs are uh, they are so around the map, so you can use them as anti. -air. They're not it's KM, not I don't think, but it's HK. DSHK, that's it. Ah, oh, shit! I was just killed. But did I kill that guy on the hill? Now I got an assist on him. Yay! Okay. Well, we need. To, we really desperately need to take B. But as you can see, no one's in B. But once we take, you were in a start. Yeah, we took it and then it fell again because this map is very black, back and forth. I said black and forth because I had to say my character's black. And he actually looks like Doc from Hamburger Hill. Yeah, because we uh, didn't realise that this this map is also from a movie. The movie is it, is it just called Hamburger Hill? Yeah, Hamburger Hill made from eighty seven, directed by somebody. It was a good film. Like yeah, I watched I, it over your shoulder. Mm. But uh, yeah, Alex, my brother, suddenly realised that my character looked almost identical to. The main black you can character. Pull up the character screen now to show Doc, who spoilers gets hit. Oh look, I'm in shadow. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. we'll do look at it later. Yeah, when you die or something. Hey. Nope, still. You can do it by the. I need to slap my squad leader for spawn, mate. You can do it by that menu. And then character. Still, still in shadow. Damn it. But yeah. Anyway. No, that's a good. Ah, oh, look, I missed the spawn. And it's clear they take influence on, you know, all sorts of full metal jacket, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Like any video game, you know. Oh yeah, the way. Oh, napalm strike. Oh, we got shot down, I think. Damn. Um. Anyway, um, the way that you spawn is completely different as well. It's no longer done on a wave system like in Red Orchestra 2. It's now done on a personal basis, and uh, the way that it, the game punishes you for team kills, for example, is to prolong your spawn by 20 seconds. Thereby, like, you know, it is a little bit of an arse take if you accidentally kill a team member, you die, and then you've got like a million you've hours got to wait. 25 seconds to wait. Ah, but it's not up. like in Redakesh, oh, where you it. could miss the spawn and have to wait another 29 seconds and some bullshit like that. For the most part, I think that the game's actually more polished than Red Orchestra is, and this is in beta. I mean, I've only had a couple of hard crashes, and it's one of two situations. Loading a map, 
or when I'm flying a helicopter and I shoot rockets at a DSHK and blow it up. Uh, that, for some reason, seems to crash my game. Uh, some of the maps seem to be more stable than others. And the map Hugh City, which wish I've played, is... I think takes ins it. takes inspiration from the scene in Full Metal Jacket when they go into a city. I can't remember if that's Hugh City or not in the film. It's not. But... Your breast fucking stinks of garlic. Yeah, I had garlic sausage for lunch. But anyway, yeah, that map is very sort of tight, close quarters, city fighting, but that seems to be quite an unstable map, and uh, if you've got a full 64 player, it seems to tax the system quite a lot. Oh, shells it Kong, isn't it? Yeah, look at a double barrel! Grab it. Grab the double barrel. Fuck this noise. Does Ooh, he, uh... buckshot. Can I change rounds? No, I can't. No, he's only got one. Yeah, that's the thing, you can change, you can get the Someone's, someone's got a RPK. Oh, really? Alpha being attacked? Oh! American artillery killed me! What wankers! Wow! Oh, you killed some Vietnamese. <laughs> that looked almost entirely like it was us he killed. No, I think overall this it's game... Free room. I mean, I was actually a bit apprehensive about the Vietnam War being a setting for a Red Akestra. Not that I dislike the Vietnam War, and I actually do want a good Vietnam War game, which there is, because there's not many out there, but... I don't know, for me, Red Akestra's always been good at having restrictions as in both sides using bolt action rifles mainly and not being about running around with an automatic weapon like most you know modern games like Battlefield or Call of Duty. I've always preferred that more uh, r restricted sort of every, like you know 90% of the team has bolt actions. But saying that I do actually think it works wonders for Red Orchestra gameplay with Vietnam. I think it's very dynamic and the Asymmetrical gameplay, which they introduced with um, Rising Storm, I think has been sort of almost doubled down on this one, and it works Damn a lot. Because I so, think that's uh, what made Rising Storm one unique. So two points quickly before I continue. Um, one of the questions I was asked by people in my last video on this game is how well does it run on lower end PCs and what have you? I mean, my PC is not lower end. Um, I can't remember what We haven't it is. tried it on my PC yet, but, which is a shit brick, so but, it might not work. But. I can run this game on high settings to ultra, but for the purposes of recording, because you've got the recording software on underneath, I'm currently playing it on custom settings between medium and high. Um, and you'll be pleased to hear that I'm getting roughly 60 frames a second from most of the game. Oh shit, Viet Cong artillery. The, the beautiful the particle effects are gorgeous. It looks so real. We keep on losing the bloody objectives <laughs> every time we capture them. Oh no, there's a cat! We're being assaulted by a cat. Uh, oh yeah, and another thing before I uh, continue as well is if the video comes to an abrupt end, it's because I'm running out of disk space. I had to delete a load of stuff to even start recording it because I tried to record a video earlier and well, it was like, yeah, I didn't have enough disk space, mate. Okay, I've only got one actual kill and it was pretty shit, so. You're fairly distracted, bro. Oh, yeah, I'm, when I'm on point, I, I mean, can get some good kills. Oh, look, there's a trip mine being set up there. Can I blow it up? Yes! With Red Orchestra 2, I think a big part of the fun in the game is sort of the immersion and almost role playing a bit. Oh, god, yeah, I role play like anything. Oh, we've only got 30 seconds. Oh. Oh god, I think it was American. Oh no, no it, it wasn't! Come, it, it kills come up instantly if they're friendly. And that's another thing change that I got used to, is... In Red Akesha 2, you, the teams and the team names were set colours. So, it was, you know, it was sort of red for Russians, blue for Germans, and then sort of, uh, blue for Americans, red for Japanese. In this, it's blue for friendly and red for enemy matter team you're on, oh, so it's the it. same... Viet Cong or American, so that, that... Well, no, I think that there's going to be changed, because if you look here on this screen, blue's an American Eagle and red's a Chinese star. Yeah, I think they just no, need to change that. Maybe. I know, I think it works with friendly and enemy, but... Well, we're about to spawn and start again. So hopefully we'll get up the fucking hill this time. Are you attacking on a different objective now? You're A. Uh, yeah, I'm on A this time. So A is the village, B is sort of a jungle trench outpost, like officers thing. And then it's a hillside. This video is not as structured as I'd like it to be, but fuck it. 
first just rising storm. Just like the storm. Vietnam War for the Americans. Well, I don't know much about the Vietnam War, whereas like Red Orchestra and, uh, and Rising Storm, I could sort of talk a little bit about the historical importance and shit. And is this accurate? Is that accurate? I don't have that as a reference point. Was that? Did I hit him? One thing to say about the beta right now is everyone's on the uh, level 99, but it's basically level zero. Everyone's skills are at zero, and you can't level up anything. And all the outfits and stuff are unlocked. Um, Damn it. So what it means that, uh, y you know, you become a hero of an orchestra with a level 50 weapon, your handling is great. At the moment, all the handling is shit. So, that's just... Uh, do you see that though? My squad leader is a machine gunner. He's got the M60. Which is a cool gun to do. Nice. Helicopters providing serious fire support, but I can see the green ammunition of the Dushka. Whatever they, I prefer call, I prefer calling it by its correct acronym. DHKM or DHHK, sorry, I always get it, it is, wrong. It's just it DHKM. No, it's DS. Can, you got a computer I right behind can't you. Let's just call it Big Gun. Hey, come on, we're, we're in Bravo. Frame rates dropped to thirty, but that's not an issue. Gonna back up to sixty. DSHK. I was right. Never question me. 1938 is a Soviet heavy machine gun firing the uh, 12.7 times 108mm cock. I thought it was a 14.5. Well, apparently not. Oh, apparently not. Oh, your breath stinks. Yeah, I had garlic sausage for lunch. I saw a of BC run down there, so. Oh my god, the amount of racism on this in the, in the chat in this game. I turned it off because. Basically, every time the Vietnamese win, anybody plays Vietnamese, it just makes. Go home, American! Or just goes, <laughs> Wing Ting Pao Ting Tao! No, yes. my favourite one Problem. is, um. What was it? <laughs> Rice Nigger. <laughs> Rice Nigger. <laughs> Fuck's sake. These, these people. Well, I didn't. I mean, also, there's sort of racism in the game itself, as in, um, at, the, at the moment, the announcer voices are um, a robotic input with an English accent. We are taking Charlie. We are yeah. taking Delta. Here comes that boy. That sort of shit. Uh, but you'll say stuff like, come on, lads, we need to get these gooks right now. Obviously, gooks is an insensitive term for... Oh, damn it. Shotgun. For uh, Oriental Asians. But, you know... It's, re it's, it's realistic to the era. Oh, come on. Oh, damn it. They're taking B. I know. Rush B. Stoker bleed. Suka, suka bleed. Suka, suka bleed. Holy shit. I ran out of this space. But, guess what? Something else bad happened. The beta ended before I could record more because it was a really short beta session. But don't worry, guys. During the next beta session, I'll record some more. This is Iron Bloke, and I'll see you next time.